Hello, in this tutorial we're going to have a look at the basics for Lightworks Viewer window. Let's open a clip viewer from the content manager. Double click the media in tiles or list view and the viewer opens up. First of all let's have a close look what we can find around the viewer frame. On the top left of a source or an edit viewer you'll find the asset name. You can rename from here. When I press enter you can see that's been reflected in the bin already. Top right You'll find the settings menu, the cogs icon. Click that to perform functions such as track grouping, making subclips, export the asset, locate it in the bin, relink. You can also open the queues panel, and I've already added four queue points here. As is normal with all Lightworks panels, you can normally access the settings menu by also right clicking on the panel. If we right click the viewer, we get back to the same menu we've just looked at. Note in here, you'll find the audio mixer panel for the source media, where you can pre-mix tracks before they're sent to an edit. That's great. I'm so happy for you. You can add bitsy timecode overlays or other information. For example, I might just want to display timecode information here. And also, the video analysis tool can be open to check the Y waveform and the color vector scope. <laughs> and finally, the clip can be destroyed from this menu. We don't want to do that for the moment. The pin will pin the viewer in place on your Lightworks desktop. I can't move it now. Then you can minimize it, back to a tile, reopen to the viewer. You can also close it, of course, with the X. The little folder icon is called the file card. The file card is a handy information sheet for the clip. From the file card, we can rename the shot. Renaming that clip 200, you can see the viewer and the bin were updated. Additionally, in the fields that allow it, you can add additional metadata using the clip's file card. Scene, shot, who, description, and take, and reel are all editable metadata fields that I can display in my bin in this view. Watch what happens to these fields as we update the file card. Scene 001, shot, close up, who, Sara, description, OK, take, 5, reel, 15A. I can add my notes as well at the bottom, needs colour correction, and all of that's been updated up here. Below the file card, you can open the source clip's timeline. This means you can see the waveforms to assist you when you're marking your shots. While we've got the source clip timeline open, going down here, you can have a look at the video tracks which are going to be sent to the edit when we perform an edit function. So these tracks can be turned on and off, either here, or on the source clip timeline, and achieve the same result. A nice feature of the source clip timeline is you can actually pre-add effects. For example, if I want to just warm up some saturation on this shot, what I need to do is right click, add an effect, go to my colour presets, and increase the saturation. And now, when that's sent to the timeline, will contain the colour effect we've applied. Pop out tile will reveal the tile in your bin. The tile will be popped out to the recent filter. And below this is the make subclip button. You can make subclips from cue points or from a marked parked range. Now I've put the cue points in the media, I hit make subclip, make the subclips based on these cue points. I hit yes, I'll accept that, the subclips are made and revealed in the subclip filter in the bin. Subclips have a little blue ribbon on them. On the bottom left, you have your time code panel. You can drop this down. The viewer controls, I can jump between these markers, or if they weren't there, they just go to the start and the end. But they also jump to events 
including mark and parked or in and out ranges. Our transport controls, we have frame step, play. If you press shift, you click the play button, you play backwards. Or space bar will toggle start and stop. Mark and park. Clear the marks. At an out point, if you specifically require it, replace to the edit and insert to the edit functions. You can also use frame nudge. Press the plus or the minus key on your number pad. I can jump 15 frames forward. Pressing minus, I can jump 15 frames backwards. It's a nice accurate way to move around. If you hover over the border of a viewer, you can get floating clip information. I can see time codes, reels, cookie number, and other useful information. And that can be opened up by hovering anywhere on the frame. We hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.